All right, guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you for purchasing the Quick Kit Vintage. I'm assuming that if you're here, you've downloaded your kit and you're ready to get started, but you're not quite sure how to go about it. Well, in this user guide series, I'm going to help you get it all sorted so you can begin creating right away. In this video, part one, I'll go over the contents of the download and briefly demonstrate installing the various assets, brushes, palettes, and macros on both your iPad and desktop. The PDF included in the download covers everything we'll talk about in this video, so those of you who are more experienced can probably skip ahead to the next video. There are five folders accompanied by a PDF in the download. Let's get started by installing our assets. The installation of assets is fairly simple. Whether in designer or photo on iPad, simply locate the asset studio icon, tap it, and from the options menu, select import category. On desktop, if your Asset Studio panel isn't visible already, locate and reveal it under View, Studio, then Assets. This should make it visible. From the Options menu, select Import Category, and you're all set. There are a few things we should take note of when installing brushes. In Affinity Designer and Publisher, make sure you are in Designer Persona when installing vector brushes, and Pixel Persona or Photo Persona if you're in Publisher when installing raster brushes. This applies to both the iPad and desktop versions of the application. To install a brush set, navigate to the Brush Studio, tap or click on the Options menu and select Import Brushes. Then, locate and select the file, after a moment, your newly installed brush set should appear in the brush menu. Repeating this process on the desktop versions, you will see a confirmation prompt upon installation. Just click OK and proceed at your convenience. Only in Affinity Photo and Publisher are we able to install and utilize macros. When in Affinity Photo on iPad, navigate to the Macro Studio, tap on the Options menu, and select Import Macros. On desktop versions, go to View, Studio, then Library. Once the library panel appears, click on the Options menu and select Import Macros. Then locate and select the file. After a moment, your newly installed macro library should appear ready for use. As of this moment, palettes cannot be installed or imported on the iPad versions of Designer or Photo. As a workaround, these palettes have been added as document palettes to each of the template and tutorial files found in this download. On desktop versions, if you'd like, simply navigate to your swatches panel in the studio. Across all applications, this appears next to the colors panel by default. To install a palette, click on the options menu and select Import Palette. From here, you've got the option to install the file as a system, application, or document palette. Here, I'm just taking a moment to show you that the palette was successfully imported. Every swatch in this palette has been named to help with the color coding in the Vintage workflow. However, it is good to know how to change the view as the default view can sometimes come in handy.
template files cannot be installed per se, but it is helpful to keep them in a convenient and easily accessible location. I use iCloud and tend to label any folders I frequent as favorites so that I can quickly and easily access them. Utilizing a template file is fairly straightforward. When starting a new document, simply tap New from Template, locate and select the template file, and you're off to the races. All right, that about does it. Now you should be all set to start getting acquainted with your new toys. If you still have any questions about something I've covered here, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. We'll see you in the next video.